What's up everybody, JD here with the VMP Performance Channel and I have an incredible car to show you. What I do have here is an incredibly clean 2014 Mustang GT. Looking down at the odometer right now, 3,860, you know, 3,870 miles, it is an absolute time capsule of a car. Now what's special about this car, aside from the low mileage, is it's base, but cloth Recaro's six-speed manual performance pack. You know, it's got Brembo brakes and all that stuff. So it's just this really neat kind of race car spec. We've got this car here to do something really special. We're doing a Gen 1 Predator Supercharger swap on this specific car. So we're going to rewind a couple days, hop in the shop. I'm going to have some parts laid out on the table. We're going to show you some of the special things that we've been able to put together uh, and pull out from our standard supercharger kits to facilitate those of you who want to do a Predator Supercharger swap on your Coyote Mustang. So, let's roll it back. What's up everybody, welcome back to <laughs> What's up everybody, welcome back to the VMP Performance YouTube channel. My name's JD and today we're talking Predator Supercharger swap on your Coyote Mustang or F-150. I've got a table full of parts here and I got a beautiful car behind me. Let's jump right in. So supercharging your Coyote is a pretty complicated process. There's a number of systems that have to be addressed to make sure that your supercharger works correctly, efficiently, and effectively in your application, such as your belt drive, your air to water cooling, any wiring and sensors necessary so your ECU has the correct information and it can be tuned properly. And we address all these things with the systems that we've extracted from our other supercharger kits to assist with putting a Predator Supercharger on there. So in this video, we're going to highlight a few of those parts and component packages that help you put the Predator blower on your Coyote. One of the first things you've got to address with your Predator Supercharger is that factory supercharger pulley. On a GT500, it's roughly three inches in diameter. On a Raptor R, it's roughly 2.9. That's 15, 16 pounds of boost, depending on the application, and entirely too much boost for a stock Coyote. So you need to pick up our Apex Predator hub, You'll get a tool with it to help remove your factory pulley off of here. So you'll pop the cartridge out and we're gonna show you on camera here in just a moment. You'll pop the cartridge out, pop that pulley off and install your new hub. So you can put on a bolt-on pulley. In this case, we're gonna be using a 3.4 inch, which is much more appropriate for a factory Coyote car. Once you pop the four bolts out, you'll need a little bit of a pry bar or a big screwdriver just to get it to come unseated from the blower. Depending on how old your Predator Supercharger is, you're, you're gonna find one of two things, either a black gasket here or anaerobic sealant. You'll wanna go back in the same way that it came off, uh, but that'll also increase or change how difficult it might be to get this cartridge off. If it's been used with anaerobic sealant, you're gonna find some resistance there. So just take your time, be very, very careful about how you pry, but it'll come right out for you. Once you've got the cartridge out, it's time to go ahead and swap out that pulley. You'll notice there's a plastic cap here. You'll take a good pick or something of that nature, and you use your hand, pop it in there, and then kind of find your the bit of slack that you can turn and twist and pry that cap out. It is a hex head in here, so just be careful. It'll pop out. So in using your vise and your removal tool here, once you have that plastic cap out, you take a 17 millimeter hex, drop it in the end of the factory pulley, and uh, use an impact or, or, you know, brute strength, and you'll pop that factory pulley off. You use a little bit of red Loctite on the threads here. Then spin the hub on by hand. While I have an opportunity to do so, I'm gonna wipe up just a little bit of the spilled here. Then you set your torque wrench to 60 foot-pounds as per the instructions. And that finishes up installing the Predator hub. Once you've finished installing the hub, you can reinstall your cartridge. If your supercharger was one that had the anaerobic sealant, you will apply a thin layer of anaerobic sealant here on the face on the supercharger. If not, you can reuse that gasket or if you damaged it in the process of taking the uh, cartridge out, you'll replace that gasket. You need these three stubs here to line up with the, uh, the joint inside. So you'll carefully slide it in there and rotate your hub until you feel it kind of set in. Then you can feel it take on the weight of the supercharger. Then you can press just a little bit more once that lines up and go ahead and get that in there. It could be a little bit finicky. Just take your time. You'll, you'll feel it sink in. 
and then you can start to press in with your hand and there it goes because this can move around a little bit you want to start your bolts by hand and just get all that started before you go at it with a power tool make sure everything spins freely and nicely once that's completed then you can move on the next thing you have to address in your swap is the throttle body in this case we're swapping into a gen 1 so it's definitely not going to work with the factory throttle body there so let's go ahead and get this thing off this is a raptor r supercharger so it's using a torx headed bolt it's a t45 we'll go ahead and pop this off now the torx headed bolts are out it'll come right off this is an o-ring seal here we offer and i'm going to pop this open throttle body adapters that reuse your stock throttle body. So depending on your goals, and particularly on a Gen 1 car, there's not really any other options than a stock throttle body. So we're gonna utilize our stock 80 mil to the 95 mil opening here. So let's get this, this adapter put on here. You will have to pay, um, pay attention to the fact that you have a, an offset. It's not a perfect square. The, uh, the bolt positions are offset and the bolt pattern here, whereas it is square on your stock throttle body. You'll notice it's wider on the bottom. You match that up here, and that's how the adapter goes on. So let's grab our hardware and get this spun on. With your spacer, is gonna come a collection of bolts. Some are for the throttle body, and some are for the spacer. The ones that are for the spacer are the four little ones here, and they'll be in the countersunk holes. You can go ahead and drop them in there and get them started. They are a five mil hex head. All right, so just go ahead and get the tool in there and get a thread started in each. These don't have to be cranked down. You just want them snug. You want to see them compress the O-ring to create the seal between the spacer and the inlet. Now you can reuse your stock throttle body on your Predator Supercharger. All right, so we've got just a few more minor preparations we need to do on the Supercharger before installing it in the car. So I'm gonna go ahead and tear down the lid section of this Supercharger by pulling the water manifold. Then we'll get the factory rails off of it and then we'll take the lid and intercooler core off itself. Take mental note of what pieces of hardware are where on the lid. It's not as important on a Predator swap, but if you're working on a, an actual Predator, a lot of these studs hold wiring harnesses and things of that nature. When you go to pop your intercooler core off, this will be eight millimeter bolts as well, and you'll want to retain these hold down rails. up your hold down rails. I like to just kind of keep the hardware nice and neat with it. I set them down together kind of in orientation how they come off. Now keep in mind most of these are still going to have some kind of coolant in it so you want to tip it up and back that way you don't just pour it all over you and you can lift it off. It's also worthy of noting that this is a great time to clean up your supercharger. The PCV system on a uh, on a Predators, both of them, are going to be depositing oil vapor just like with any other car uh, Coyote engine. So you'll have oil deposits that are in here. You can just take a rag and clean that up. Now that we've got the blower stripped down, we can start to build it back up. First thing we're gonna do is plug this map sensor port right here in the front. It's not gonna be used on the Coyote platform because we'll be mass air. So I'll take the factory bolt out, grab the map block off plate, Put it in place and tighten this thing up. Factory bolt is a seven mil bolt. Let me grab a quarter inch drive. Got that good and tight. Now we need to make a lid modification and we'll turn to Luke, our technician, to get that knocked out. And just a note specifically to the 11 to 14s, for the IAT sensor, you are going to have to drill and tap Right here, this old MAF port that was used in the, uh, in the Raptor in both the GT500, you drill it out with a 9 16 drill bit and then tap it with a 3 8 NPT tap. 
Once you do that, you can spin in your plastic sensor. And that finishes the last of the preparations we're gonna do to the, the supercharger and the supercharger lid before we move over to the car and start installing some of these new components. So first up, we're gonna discuss the top portion of the belt drive. This is also known as the Fiat or front engine accessory drive. You'll see that the bracket, the boomerang bracket itself is here in place. This holds the top two smooth idler pulleys. First one being down here on the bottom, put it in place, grab the short bolt and washer, and you'll spin it on. And you'll notice you've got two threaded holes for the top position. You're actually going to place this in 99% of configurations, you'll set it right here in the top position of those two. You only move it to the bottom once you go with a small enough pulley to justify needing that much more belt wrap and getting some clearance from the idler. But that completes putting the top portion of your belt drive system in there. The only other thing I wanted to point out, uh, and it's right behind this here pulley, is there's a nub of the timing cover uh, that will stick out. When you put your bracket in there, if that piece of the raw casting of the timing cover kind of raises up and it's above the bracket itself, you'll want to grind that down just to make sure it doesn't interfere with the bottom pulley. Let's take a look at the, uh, the ribbed idler and tensioner. So now I've got you down off the tripod to show you a bit more about the belt drive system. We just talked about the boomerang bracket here with your two smooth idlers. Also in the street fiat that's included in the base predator swap package, you're gonna have this tensioner down here uh, with a smooth idler on it, this ribbed idler up on the timing cover, uh, and this will complete the additional parts necessary for the belt drive for the predator swap. So the, the routing, I'm gonna pop it up on the screen, but the routing goes down around the crankshaft, up over the smooth idler, down around the AC compressor, back up over this ribbed idler, underneath this smooth idler, up over the supercharger pulley, back down around the smooth idler, down to the crankshaft. And that completes the entirety of the first shiv mounted belt drive system for your supercharger. The very last thing that you wanna take into consideration is you wanna have a look at the bottom side of your supercharger. If you've got these dowels on the passenger side of your uh, Predator supercharger, this one in particular came off a of Raptor R, you're gonna to have to either grind down or, or uh, remove these dowels. So we're gonna get these removed and then we can put the blower on the car. One of the systems that you have to address when installing a Predator supercharger on your Coyote is gonna be your air to water intercooling system. The way the system operates is you have an intercooler core in your supercharger, you saw that earlier, underneath your supercharger lid. That takes water and passes the incoming air charge once it gets through the rotors and cools it back down before it goes into your engine. Two major components of that are gonna be your intercooler pump as seen here, as well as a heat exchanger. In this particular application, we've used our Bosch pump, the, uh, the wiring harness that runs not only that pump, but also the fans that are on our dual fan triple pass to create a really bulletproof system for this particular vehicle. In our Predator base package, we have our single pass, but you can upgrade to this dual fan triple pass and you can get the harness and everything necessary to set up for your pump, your fans, and the heat exchanger itself. This is a great way to take care of that air to water need. Another one of the solutions that we've come up with for Predator swaps is a Predator swap specific set of fuel rails. You'll notice here, I'm gonna rack in there so you can see it. We've got our rails here. Now, this particular application is utilizing a Raptor R supercharger. And the way that those bolt down is, while it's in the same location, the supercharger itself is machined a little bit different in regards to the, the long bolts that hold the rails down. It's not like the GT500 that uses like almost an eight inch bolt, six inch bolt, something really, really long. On these, it's much, much shorter. So you'll either, uh, and you can see it here, You'll either reuse the OEM bolt as we've done in this, and uh, going forward, we're gonna be including hex headed hardware that's shorter to match up with the, uh, the hole here. So on the GT500, just for a simple expo explanation here, the bolt for the fuel roll goes all the way through down to the cylinder head. On the, on the Raptor R, they do not penetrate all the way through the supercharger. They're much shorter. So just keep in mind that you either need to retain your stock bolts or you can use our included hardware that we'll be putting with these fuel rails going forward. Also, earlier in the video when we were doing the supercharger prep, you saw me install the throttle body spacer and adapter down to the stock throttle body. Here you see now with the throttle body installed, this is how it uh, configures on the supercharger itself. So now that we've gotten pretty much finished up here, at least most of the hard parts installed, really all that's left is bleeding down the, the air to water cooling system and getting, you know, get, cool it in and make sure there's no bubbles, so on and so forth. I want to take one more time to kind of overview the parts and systems, particularly some of the special things like which intake we used here. So on this 11 to 14, we're using the, uh, the tune required 11 to 14 NA intake uh, because it's the right size for the throttle body and lines up, looks really, really nice and clean in the engine bay here. 
we've uh, we've assembled a set of hoses where we're actually routing you know up from the heat exchanger here comes up into the engine bay goes into the bottom of the water manifold through the intercooler core out of the top this dips down below here and routes up and it's actually got a 180 on the back side of this degas bottle we're using here and then comes out and goes back down to the pump that completes the air to water system here uh, and again this is the tune required in a intake and that pretty much wraps up and completes the systems here uh, you know you saw earlier in the video we had to drill and tap for the IAT2 sensor here it's got a jumper harness that uh, is included when you purchase that that harness in IAT sensor kit uh, so that's all hooked up and uh, we've got a, an extender for the, the throttle body here uh, to connect to the OEM throttle body on that spacer. All right, in regards to the brake booster and, and uh, EVAP purge solenoid, the way we did this is we actually modified some, some custom bulk hoses to, to hook everything up and uh, we took the ends off the OEM uh, EVAP purge line as well as the, the line that fed the brake booster to set this up. So you've got two ports up here right behind the throttle body. The first one is the larger one. We're using that to feed the brake booster. So we've took the bulk line here and connected that directly to this port. Uh, and then you're going to have a long skinny port here. We uh, took some bulk line and this is an 18 up style uh, EVAP purge solenoid and we have a, an adapter harness we have available. I'll link this in the description below. We use that just to have it a little bit smaller, but you can do the same thing with the, uh, the OEM purge solenoid for your 11 to 14 car. Um, you'll just, you know, you'll tuck it back here and connect the, the appropriate ends uh, to, to set it up. And then we run it down to the hard line that's up underneath the booster here. Uh, but that's how we took care of those two things. Made it super clean where you can still see your nice rails. Yeah, it's pretty slick. So this car just came off the dyno and it made an awesome like 610, 615 real world horsepower. We'll pop a graph up for you to check it out. This car, aside from a Magnaflow cat back uh, and the Predator swap that we completed on it is stock, like stock stock. 3,800 mile time capsule stock. Now, the Predator swap that we did uh, features a 3.4 inch pulley. Um, we're using an adapter to reuse the stock throttle body on this car. This creates a situation where you're right around like 9 or 10 peak PSI, maybe 11. Um, and it creates this like OEM plus kind of feel in driving it. It's peppy, you know, um, it feels really, really good, delivers torque almost instantaneously and very linear in the way that it delivers torque. And it just drives great, you know, uh, that's a perk of reusing the stock throttle body. It's gonna drive like a stock car. Another perk of doing the Predator Supercharger swap is we've got this OEM plus looking installation, right? You know, it's a Ford factory supercharger uh, and, and just, Luke did an awesome job of laying everything out really clean and really nice on this car. Uh, and, it, and it suits the, the, the low mileage sub 4,000 mile, you know, story of this car. So I'm sure you want to know, what's this car like after the blower? Oh, uh, well, uh, <laughs> it runs good. Let's say it that way. Uh, no, it, pull, it pulls great, it drives great. Uh, and then calms right back down after you get out of it, so... So the car drives great, pulls great, makes great power, and it sits at a power number that's going to mean this car's going to have a long, healthy, and happy life. It's not pushing the, the ragged edge right at 600 wheel horsepower. This thing's going to be around for a long time and be a whole lot of fun every single minute of it. One more goose for the boys, huh? All right. Right up to the speed limit. So there you have it, a two for one. We got to tell you a little bit about some of the, the specific components that we utilize to facilitate Predator supercharger swaps. And we got to tell you the story of a really cool low mileage car. If you're interested in any of these parts, we have a whole section on our website under VMP parts, Predator swap parts. You can go there. We've got a write up on what parts are needed and how to get it done. And of course, you can drop us a line at sales at VMP performance. Give us a call at 321-206-9369 or give us a shout on social media. We're happy to help and we'd love to help you boost your ride. Have a great day and we'll see you in the next video.